Most of us spent a large portion of our childhood in cars, and we watch other people drive cars all the time. But the first time you go to drive a car, do you magically know how to do it just because you've watched a bunch of other people do it? Of course not. This analogy represents what we call the tutorial trap. The process of just watching tutorial after tutorial, trying to learn how to code that way, but not actually getting hands-on experience yourself, and this just doesn't work. In fact, this is one of eight different mistakes that I've identified that I want to share with you as to why people are failing to learn how to code, and believe me, I know because I tried and failed to learn how to code dozens of times before I actually figured it out, and I've seen countless of my own students fall into these same traps time and time again. Now, as you're learning how to drive, since we've identified the fact that you can't just watch a bunch of tutorials or watch somebody else driving, one of the key things you will be doing is asking a lot of questions. And the same is true with learning how to code. You need to be asking lots of questions about all of the things you don't understand. If you don't ask these questions, you'll never figure out the answers. Now, this can come in lots of different forms. It can be asking these questions to an actual teacher or a mentor, or it can be asking the questions online or just Googling the answers to your questions or searching it up on ChatGPT. But regardless, you need to be actually asking questions. And now as you're asking questions, make sure you ask good questions. I know we say all the time that there's no such thing as a bad question, but this just isn't true. Bad questions are things like, can you fix this for me? Why is that a bad question? Because it doesn't come with a growth mindset. You're not actually trying to learn by just having somebody else fix your problem. A good question almost always follows the same three-part formula. Part number one is going to be context. What exactly is the problem? What are you trying to solve? What are you trying to do? And then part number two is going to be what you've actually tried yourself. How have you tried to approach this problem so far? What are the things you've done that have failed? And part number three should be an ask, but this should come with a growth mindset. So it shouldn't be, can you fix this for me? It should be, can you teach me how to fix this? And this brings us to the third mistake I see all of the time, and that's copy and pasting solutions. This can be copying solutions from a tutorial. This can be copying solutions from ChatGPT or Stack Overflow. But regardless, you don't want to just go around copying solutions to your problems. You want to actually be focused on learning. So if you find some solution online, that's great, but don't just copy and paste it. Make sure you actually understand that solution. It's sort of like the old adage that if you give a man a fish, he eats for a day. But if you teach that man to fish, he eats forever. And you want the same goal for yourself. You want to be taught how to fish. You don't want to just be given a fish, which is what copy and pasting from Stack Overflow is. You want to be learning how to do the thing so the next time you encounter this problem, you don't have to go and look it up. My rule is that if I can't explain every single line of the code I'm copying, then I'm not ready to copy that code yet. I'm going to spend some time to learn whatever it is that's being used in that code that I don't understand. Now, as you're going through this process, one of the things I see a lot of people falling victim to is ignoring the fundamentals in favor of learning whatever's trendy at the time. So for example, you might jump straight into React having never learned any HTML or JavaScript. And while this might work in the short term, in the long term, it's going to cause problems. It's sort of like building a house without a foundation. Sure, it might stand up for a little bit, but eventually that house is going to collapse. And the same is true if you skip steps in learning how to code, you should focus on fundamentals and then use those fundamentals to learn other skills like frameworks and libraries. Ultimately, what this means is you need to be taking things one step at a time. And this leads us to the next mistake I see a lot of people making, and that's just generally a lack of practice and overall impatience towards the process. It's going to take a lot of time and it's going to take a lot of practice. Going back to the car analogy, you want to start learning how to drive on the highway. You would maybe start in an empty parking lot, then maybe a neighborhood, and eventually you'll get up to the highway, but it's going to be one step at a time. And the same is true with coding. With each project you do, you want to be introducing yourself to something new and unfamiliar, because ultimately that's how you learn. Now, with all of these tutorials you go through, you need to understand the context of how they were created and then see the gap it leaves in your knowledge. Knowledge. So as we create tutorials, and I say we because I've been guilty of doing this very thing, we sort of build some project that we want you to build as you go through the tutorial, and then we make a tutorial based on that project. But what does that mean? What that means is that when I built the initial project for a tutorial, I've already done the debugging process. I've figured out how to build this project, and I'm just giving you all of the steps. So because of this, I'm sort of skipping that debugging process for you, and if you just spend all of your time following these tutorials, you'll never learn how to actually do debugging on your own. So ultimately what this means you need to do is spend time to deliberately learn how to debug. 
learn how to use tools like the dev tools and the debugger to locate the source of your bugs and to find a way to fix them. And one of the reasons that new developers lack this debugging knowledge is because of the next mistake in how they're learning, and that's not doing quote unquote real projects. So doing projects outside of just tutorial projects because these are the projects that you will have to do everything yourself. You'll have to figure out how to debug issues yourself. And they're not going to be pre-debugged for you. Going through just tutorial projects is sort of like learning how to swim on land. Sure, you might be able to get the form right, but ultimately you're not swimming yet and you won't know the sensation of swimming and feeling like you're falling underwater a little bit until you actually jump in the pool. And now everything I've said up until this point probably sounds like a lot of work, and honestly it is. Learning how to code is not a quick process, it's not going to take days or even weeks, it will take months if not years to learn how to code. And this leads to the next reason so many people fail learning how to code, and that's burnout. If you try to do everything at once, if you try to do a bunch of these 18 hour days where you're just going to grind through tutorials and projects, you are going to get burned out and you're probably going to end up giving up. So instead, try to pace yourself, take it one step at a time, and just enjoy the journey along the way. Now with that said, no matter where you are in your process of learning how to code, I hope you found this video helpful. If you did, make sure to subscribe for future content and I will see you next time.